Hello everybody, we've got uh, another gun today. We've got a Nikko 5100. Now, what's quite nice about this gun is it's on a Nikko action, but what varies with it is it's also got some parts of uh, a Winchester 101 on it. And what we'll do, we'll take the gun apart and we'll show you a few different things that are on it and, and we'll show you the differences and the non-differences that we can see. Now, as I said with the D5G video, we're trying to tell a story. The story is Brownie Maruka and Winchester, the Japanese side of them, and the fact that very little history is known, and it's it's record history that we're looking for, i.e. serial numbers, dates, and approximate models of guns. Well, I've been asking this question since I was quite a young lad, and uh, there's no records to be had, to be honest with you. So, from the little, the little bit of records that we can find from Winchester or Olin Kadesha's, Olin Kadesha, Olin Corporation's released information, was Winchester in America, as early as 1946, were looking to to go offshore, i.e. off of America. They were looking to go offshore with production. They looked at places in Germany, Austria, here in the UK, they looked at Spain, Portugal, and the Philippines was another one I read in the book. And they eventually decided that uh, the Japanese were the, uh, were the most likely partner. Whether that was a good idea or not, it proved not to be a good idea, obviously. So that was in 46, and by about 1955, the Maruku Company in Japan was selected to to go forward with uh, with production for Winchesters. Well, that partnership didn't happen. It did or it didn't happen. And what we ended up with is we ended up with the with the Olin Kadesha plant. Now again, the the start dates for them become a little bit convoluted. It's it's. The first date that you can find is about 1955, and then the second date that you can find is either 1962 or 1963. Now, whether 55 was the start of the rebuilding of the factory, 63 was, couldn't tell you. As I said, records are vague at best. So, what essentially Winchester did, put a brand spanking new factory in, and essentially what Nico were doing, making stuff out the back door. So I've read a few different things that say there was two plants running. Uh, I doubt that, to be honest with you. I doubt that. I would say that there was probably just one plant. Now, the other thing that you will read, the, the factory had between four and 500 people in it. Winchester was allowed four full-time staff to oversee the operations in the factory of over, over four. 100 to 500 people. Well, that partnership ran till about 1981 when Olin Corporation sold uh, Winchester Repeating Arms and they also sold Olin Kadesha to, 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 to the management of the factory. So that was 81 and then we run to about 87, 89, something like that and unfortunately it all sort of goes a bit quiet. When I say goes a bit quiet, they dismantled the factory and production ceased. So the records are gone, spare parts are gone. It's it's almost as if the gun never existed, but we've got quite a few guns that are left over to look at. <laughs> There's a little tool. Please bring the camera over here, Paul, and we will start with some of the some of the things on this gun. Now it's that way around. Let me roll it this way. Can you get in that video, Paul, can you yep. get the wear that we've got on the stock and the forend? Oh, yes. So, this gun is in its original condition from the factory. It's not been messed about with, it's not been tarted up, it's not been refinished badly. So, 
one of the things that you will find when you're when you're reading about the Olin Kadesha plant is you will f you will find that apparently Nico were using the higher end walnut higher end stuff the higher end walnut on their own guns and the Winchester 101s were getting what was left over now plain piece of wood Paul looks pretty plain to looks me fairly plain yep. doesn't it looks fairly plain <clears throat> Give me the camera. Give me the camera. Only because somebody asked me. <laughs> Who's the man behind the camera? Who's the man behind the camera? Uh, and there he is. Come on, you talk now. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't know where to start, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, some... from your videos as well as the people watching. Yeah, so somebody asked me who's behind the camera, Paul, and here you are, mate. So yeah. literally, we've I've shown you, here's Paul, yeah, all right? Unmasked. All right, mate, there you go. And we will get you in further coming videos, Paul. And we'll get out and do some, some clay shooting. But the the quality of the wood on most of the Nikos that I've ever seen, Paul, only goes along with the same quality of the wood on the Winchester 101s. So whether that was just a way of Olin Kadesha looking, or Olin looking for, for a reason to pull out of the deal, but... They say the quality of the wood was a lot better. Most of the ones I've seen have been fairly average at best. So the overall wear on this gun, Paul, the reason that this gun has lived quite a hard life is because what they were selling the gun for when it was new was very reasonably priced for what you were getting. Basically, yeah. the quality of the gun was very, very good. This gun would have been about 200 quid, 270 quid, something like that. Now, I've dated the gun. It's very easy to date because it was proofed here in the UK. It was dated, it was proofed in the UK, it was proofed in London in 1974. I believe that the importer for Nico shotguns into the UK was at the time Gunmart, which is now GMK. I would doubt that they've got any records either of what came in what did and mm -hmm. what didn't come in. Now, I'll go back to my, my, my turn screw here, Paul. See, a lot of people missed that. A lot of people <laughs> missed that, they did. So what we will see on the side of this gun, Paul, is it's hand engraved, yeah. okay? So we've got the, the border and edge that's been hand engraved all the way up to here, all the way over the top of the gun, all the yeah. way over the top of the gun. Okay. All right. And we'll try and talk a few other things that interest me about the gun. It's been hand engraved on the scroll work on the side, and it's been hand engraved at the hinge here, and it's been chased around the edges. Now, part, yeah. part of the reason that I'm showing this gun, Paul, is because, is because it's not just the engraved ones that interest me, it's all of the Olin Kadeshas, and really, it's the... The story of the plant that that I'm looking for that interests me. So let's come up here and we will show some of the markings to say that it's a, a model 5100. Yep. Now, did that mean anything or was that just a wild number that, mm -hmm. uh, that the, the Japanese picked out? Again, we'll never know. These people here, can you read that to me? It's just struggling to focus in on that little bit at the bottom. Not so much the bit at the bottom, this bit, oh. that bit there. Can you read yeah, it? There it is. Uh, Kane Matsu. Kane Matsu. Yeah. I believe that they were a importer, exporter of guns in Japan, basically. Again, I can't tell you. It's just very, very vague as I keep saying, and then you'll see that this was imported into Alton, is it? Uh, 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 Arlington? Arlington. Was that HTS? Yeah. Now, when you type those that name into Google, it does come up. So please do your research. Yeah. And, and, and that's completely on you. Okay. Okay. So what we got, Paul, is this one is a lightweight game. You've got a narrow rib on it. Yep. Got a narrow rib on it. Now, I will try and talk. It's a fixed choke gun. We've got most of the Nikos that I look at, Paul, have got this pull button fore end. Okay? Yep. 
some of the Winchesters have got it, some haven't. Most Marukus that you look at, the four-end release catch is just a pull. This little button that's here, generally, is on mainly Nikos. Yeah. All right. Now, as I've said with, and we will Sorry, take... Would they have done that because they thought that was better than the others or because they needed to make oh, it look a bit different? This, probably because it was a little bit better to be honest with you, because it was a, it was an added extra. It was an added extra. So, interestingly, Paul, on the Winchesters that I've had, this little piece, which is the cocking dog, yeah. okay, most of the Winchesters that I've had, I haven't looked as hard as I should have done. This little tab here is machined into the four-end iron itself. Yep. Yeah. This, like an Italian gun, the fore-end has been machined, and then this piece has been attached, see, with a screw yeah, that's it, yeah. at a later date. This is why you need to look at every single gun, especially from these people, because mm -hmm. quite often they're different. Each individual gun is different. So, again, we go back to the markings, Paul. You've got, it's marked, it's a 5,100. You've also got the fact that it's marked full, i.e. 40 thou full choke yep. modified for uh, 20 thou half choke so you've also got Nico's ejector system on this one Paul yep. now if you if you do look you will see that this ejector system is similar and when I say similar that is what it is it's similar to a Browning B26 or a Browning B27 does that tell me that Nico came up with the idea completely on their own? Did they look at a, uh, a Browning B26? Or is it just a coincidence? These are the things that you have to look at. Also, what you'll find, Paul, is it's Nico forend. Yep. Nico ejector system. The gun is marked Nico in every different direction. Unlike the shadows that we had the other day. Yep. And most of the Nikos that I've looked at, most of the Nikos that I've looked at have got a cocking dog that rocks like a Browning or a Maruku. This this one, like a Winchester 101, moves straight backwards. Can you see me yep. moving that? Yep. So basically what Nico were doing, as the production line was moving, they were trying different guns as I've said to you, they were making stuff out the back door. I would assume Winchester said you cannot use our 101 action. Now, the 101 action, Paul, was was designed by Maruku. Uh, how do I know that? Read the right books and it will tell you it was designed by Maruku. When I say the right books, I mean the Winchester's own history books. It will tell you it was designed by Maruku. Just what's the uh, the stampings on on there? That is the proof mark from UK. Ah, that's CP or Crown proof. So they're there instead of no, they're there on, as well. They're, they're there as well. You have to do the you have to yep. do the action and the barrels at the same time. Also, now I've got to give I've got to give a shout out to my gunsmith Rob. Because he bought this gun, especially for us to do a video on. Mm -hmm. All right, so it, as we've said with the earlier videos, it is to show people the different guns that are out there. Rob pointed out to me that this is marked as a two and three quarter inch gun pull. Yeah, but it's proofed as a two and three quarter inch magnum, and it's proofed at three. Let me just get over here, my bad eyes. <laughs> It's proofed at three and a quarter, come on, three and a half tons per square inch, whereas a standard proofing would be three and a quarter tons per square inch. Yeah. So this was, uh, this was pointed out to me by my gunsmith, Rob. So even though it's two and three quarter inch, it's proofed as a three and a, three and a half tons per square inch, so a magnum two and three quarter inch. Hmm. Interestingly enough, yeah. Also, what you will what you will see, Paul, is what, what two and three quarter magnum loads would you have got then? 
42 grand probably. High velocity, 42 grams. My onkies, something like that. Fast moving Italian stuff. Mm -hmm. Kick the mothers out, yeah. <laughs> so all of the all of the guns that come from the Olin Kadesha plant are monoblock barrels. The reason they use monoblock, Paul, is monoblock is a cheaper way. Chopper lump barrels, which we'll move on to the next video. Chopper lump barrels are a stronger way of joining two barrels together, but it's a harder process to yeah. do. Now, let's look at the serial number system, Paul. Now, as we keep saying, the serial number system bears no resemblance to anything. What I find very interesting is, this is marked for, with a K for Kadesha. Yeah. Uh, 196805 and I am in the process with the with the other guns we got I'm in the process of talking to people in America about them that, that don't know anything about them I'm also now emailing people in Japan and those people are forwarding stuff onto the Maruku factory for us so hopefully we can get an answer for, for the guns in the future what interests me Paul <coughs> And I can't believe that they've they've done it. Mm -hmm. Is if the if the, the the management or if these Nikos were coming out the back door, why did they use the same serial number system? When I say yeah. the same serial number system, I mean the K for Kadesha and a six digit serial number system. Yeah. Some of the very, very early, and I mean very, very early ones that I've looked at, Paul, have been a five digit serial number system. Some of them were marked with a K, or some I've seen, some I've seen are marked with a K, some of them are just marked with a five-digit serial number system. The serial numbers themselves, the, the actual numbers themselves, are the same style of number, therefore they were obviously using the same rolling machine. Yeah. But what interests me, if you were going to make something out of a plant that you weren't allowed to, why would you use the same serial number system? Oh <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you use why wouldn't you use any other system on the planet but not fall in line with yeah. the same system that but they weren't got? even trying to hide the fact that they were making the guns. Well, <laughs> what I've said from the early part of the video, Paul, bearing in mind that it, it they could well have started the factory in nineteen fifty five. Well obviously the war only finished nine years before, so there was there was a, a fair bit of tension, I would say, still <laughs> still prevalent, still present. <laughs> and what is nice is we have got some beautiful guns that are all over the world that, that are left to look at. Now the reason that we've done this one, Paul, is a little talk just about the guns, the condition. Let's have a look at the the recall oh, yeah. pack. Nico one, yeah. Yeah, Nico recall What's, pack. It says Nico... Trademark. trademark that's yeah, it. Nico trademark. Oh, they, they was getting all the right cues from the <laughs> Americans. Oh, they was getting all the right cues from the Americans. Go on in, mate. Chuck her down. Chuck her down. So we've done this one, Paul, to show the condition, to show you the different guns that are out there, the different models, the different names. And we'll never get to the end of it, luckily enough. It's it's the it's the search for the history. It's the search for the guns that are driving us, basically. So, what else can we talk about? What else can we talk about? This gun, hand checkered, wrinkled pad. That's a thing. Customization, which is what I keep going on about. Customization. The thing that makes the guns special is every little piece, every little part about them, the recoil pads, the finish on the stock, the checkering. Customisation, it's, it's each and every little part on the gun that makes a gun special. When you start customising them, you're taking away the specialness, the things that make the gun special. Now, you, you could say, well, I've only changed one bit, the gun is still special in, it, it's still special in its own right, and that is, that is very, very true. When you're looking at stuff that's particularly old and it's it's lived a life and it is in its original condition, I prefer to see them in their original unmolested condition, un unplayed with, unplayed with. But this is this is a, this is another video. Browning Maruku's Winchesters. We've got another gun to do. We will move on to that. That's an older Maruku. 
And uh, yeah, thanks very much, everybody. Keep watching the videos.